By the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the settings that I use to take the best iPhone shots possible. Photos like these taken with nothing but my iPhone 14 Pro. If you're interested as well, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to share with you a free Lightroom preset so you can take your iPhone shots from looking something like this to something like this. If you don't know me, my name is Tom. I'm a professional videographer and photographer based here in the UK. And I love shooting smartphone photos because I'm a big fan of the mantra, the best camera is the one you have on you. And I never go anywhere without my phone. And before I jump into showing the exact specific settings because we will walk through the iPhone camera app and go through each individual point. I want to briefly talk about shooting RAW on the iPhone. So on the Pro version of the iPhone from models onwards of the iPhone 12 Pro, so that is the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, and the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, you actually have the option of shooting in Apple Pro RAW. And what this will do is give you a file which gives you far greater editing control than you would have with a standard JPEG photo file. The way I like to think about this is if you are trying to get the best shot possible with your iPhone, you're probably always gonna want to shoot Apple Pro Raw if you can on your phone. What I mean by this is you're not gonna want to do it all the time and have it permanently on on your camera because the files are really pretty large. And you definitely don't need a raw photo for everything if you're just like, you know, sharing a photo of your dinner or something. But when you are consciously thinking about taking the photograph you're taking, maybe you're on a trip and you're thinking, okay, this is the time I'm gonna hit this absolute banger. I think you should definitely be shooting Pro Raw if the on-model of iPhone allows you to do it. And we will be talking about Pro Raw a lot in this video because that certainly is the best way of shooting iPhone photos. Another thing I really want to talk about here, and this is something which I've not seen in any video talking about the iPhone and its camera settings, is that the iPhone has like an almost auto-enhanced feature on their standard JPEGs. You might have seen this, I'll show you an example. So I'm gonna go and take a photo of this here. You can see that I've taken that photo and then it kind of snaps. You see that little snap there? That's Apple's AI kind of automatically enhancing that photo. And there's no way of immediately going back to the photo that you actually thought you were taking. Apple applies a kind of pre-edit, and if you don't like it, kind of tough. Sometimes it's not too dramatic, but sometimes it's absolutely massive. And there's a bunch of times I actually just want to go back to how it was kind of looking before Apple applied this auto-processing. So in my testing, there's only two ways of fixing this. First of all is shooting raw, like I talked about, because obviously the advantage of shooting raw is that there's no processing happening to that file. So you're able to edit it in the exact way that you like. But the only second way I've found of fixing this is to ensure that you are shooting with live photos turned on. Once you've turned on live photos and you take your shot, you can actually change that key photo to a different frame. Every single frame doesn't have this processing applied, only the key photo from that snap. And what that means, of course, is you can choose a different frame from your live photo and it will look much more like you were intending in the first place. It's super annoying we have to do this. I cannot believe it's not a setting in the standard camera app. But there we go, that's the way this is, unfortunately. Until Apple provides us with a way to turn this off, that is a way to do it while shooting JPEGs on your iPhone. All right, so we're in the settings app here. This is the main uh, iPhone settings app. I'm gonna scroll right down to the camera settings because I actually do use um, the official camera app for all of my photography. It's the easiest way, in my opinion, to shoot with the Pro Raw mode. So we're gonna head straight into that formats section. I actually use most compatible because I do a lot of video editing and I use iPhone footage um, in my videos, as you guys obviously know. Normally, I would actually use the high efficiency mode because I do think the high efficiency file formats are really, really good. This will just reduce the size, the overall size of a lot of your um, of your photos and your videos from your iPhone. But I'm using, leaving it on most compatible. I would actually suggest you use high efficiency though. This is the key setting here for us today. So this is the Pro Raw settings mode. So you want to toggle this on if this is off. And then you want to go into this one if you have an iPhone 14 Pro, this will appear. You can have the option of shooting that 48 megapixel file or 12 megapixel file. We want 48 megapixels and that's going to ensure we use the most amount of data using the entire sensor available on this phone. This one's a video setting, Apple ProRes actually turned this off. A lot of these are video settings I'm not really going to cover in this video, um, but Preserve Settings is a really useful tool. What this basically allows you to do is set which setting on your phone is going to persist when you open and close the settings. So 
for instance, live photo, I talked about that earlier. You might want your live setting to always default to on or off, um, and you can do that achieving those toggles. The raw one is another one. I'm actually gonna turn that off because I've been running into a, a problem recently where I'm shooting raw photos where I've not been meaning to. So I'm gonna turn that off, but if you want to shoot raw all the time, that's a setting which you could turn on. Some slightly more general app settings. There's a couple of settings here. First of all is the grid. I would thoroughly recommend you use the grid on your iPhone. Uh, it will allow you to frame shots and you can actually see this overlay grid on all of the photos that you take. Mirror front camera, I just like that when I'm taking selfies, that type of thing. Um, and I would turn view outside the frame off. It will help your compositions because you're only gonna be seeing in the frame what will kind of end up in your photograph. And that's a far better way, in my opinion, having stuff that you can kind of roughly see in the outside frame of the camera setting. Uh, for instance, in the, up here and down here, you will see parts of the photo if you have that setting on. I like to turn it off because you're actually seeing a more accurate representation. Something you definitely want on is the lens correction mode. And then I also have, I also have on ma macro control and this lets you toggle on and off macro control. You can't see it right now because it's not appearing, but you actually did just see it there. So I can turn on that on and off nice and easy. So here we are in the official camera app now. Um, the first things I wanna draw your attention to are the most important settings in my opinion. First of all is that live control, but only important because of what I talked about earlier. If you're shooting JPEG on your phone, I would encourage you to hit the live button and actually allow yourself to be able to pick and choose whether or not you want that auto enhanced photograph. And then the other option is of course that raw control. This will let you shoot in RAW depending on wh what lens you're in. For the iPhone 14 Pro, there's no differences there, so you can shoot RAW in all of those uh, those lenses. In terms of additional settings, if we open up this panel here, there's only really a couple. This one's an easy easy area for your live control there. Uh, your standard aspect ratio, you can change your aspect ratio for your photographs. I like to leave it on four by three because that's the kind of the most um, kind of standard uh, area. You have your exposure settings. Um, and other areas as well. Nothing else really in this section actually needs to change. A lot is mostly controlled now uh, through the editing process. Okay guys, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom and this is obviously where a lot of the magic happens when it comes to photo editing, bringing your file from something that looks like this to something a bit more finished. The exact same principles go into working on Adobe Lightroom Mobile. I just prefer to work in the desktop version because that's kind of where I do most of my actual uh, photo work. So we're gonna uh, edit a couple of photos here so you can obviously see the process that we go through when we are editing uh, an Apple RAW photo shot on the iPhone. This actually is a 12 megapixel uh, file. I thought it was a 48 megapixel file, uh, but it was actually a 12 megapixel file. And we'll edit a 48 megapixel file uh, in a little while here. So first of all, the advantage of using Lightroom is you can use presets if you want. So I have a number of presets designed specifically for Apple Pro RAW. This is uh, this light bleach one is for a certain type of lighting situation. But you can see that I would probably go for something like everyday pop on this particular image. These presets are available down below in the description if you're interested in trying some of them out. We're gonna edit this photo though from scratch so you can kind of get an idea for the tones. So first thing we wanna do is actually select your profile here. And if you shot a file in Apple Pro Raw, the Apple Pro Raw profile will appear. So I'm gonna actually increase the uh, exposure just a little bit. I'm gonna increase the temperature to around about 6,000 Kelvin. We're gonna bring the highlights down on this image and we are gonna bump the contrast just a little bit as well. I'm going to dim the shadows down because what I'm wanting, I can hit this before, this slash for before and after you can see that already that's having kind of like a much nicer light type of vibe. It's obviously a nice sunset image, this image of the shard. I would basically want to make it appear almost like more sunsetty and more of a kind of a, like a slightly more muted vibe, a bit like the sun's actually gone down at this point, even though it obviously hasn't because we're seeing a, a sort of a shadow cast in this corner. I'm going to reduce the blacks slightly as well, just pull some of those down. Maybe not quite as aggressive as that. I'm going to decrease the texture. This is what I do on all my Apple Pro, Pro Raw photos. Uh, that's actually got a little bit muddy because it's a 12 megapixel image instead. So I'm actually only going to reduce that down to about 10. And I'm going to increase the clarity to about 5. I'm going to decrease the vibrance on this image just a little bit. And then increase the saturation by about 5. Let's hit that before and after again. You can see that that is looking now really nice. I'm going to go down to this section here. This is a, again where a lot of the magic happens. I'm going to decrease the sharpening on this image. Again, this is a 12 megapixel raw file, not a 48. So I might not want to reduce it fully. We can zoom in to double check here. I'm actually going to reduce it to around 25. 
so about half the original sharpening and then we'll go into lens corrections and imply a profile lens correction as well so there we go that's an edited file that's the kind of more normal that's what you'd get out of your normal uh, phone then that's it afterwards next we will go into this photo here and this is the actually edited already, but what we'll do is we'll reset this. So this is an unedited raw file. Um, and this is actually what it would look like directly out of camera, shot JPEG. So you can see this significant difference that you're getting when you are able to shoot in Apple Pro Raw and edit this file. So first of all, again, our treatment, our profile correction, we want to make sure that the uh, Apple Pro Raw is selected there. For this one, I want it to be really, really sunsetty. So I'm going to increase the temperature right up to 6600. I know that that's now quite yellow compared to the before and after, but trust me, I think when we uh, start looking at things, that will look good. I'm going to leave the exposure roughly where it is at the moment. I'm going to increase the contrast right up because I really do want it to pop. And again, this is starting to look quite fake, but we will fix that and remedy that later. So I'm going to drag down the highlights to about minus 15. I'm going to decrease the shadows to about minus 10 as well. I'm going to reduce the whites to maybe around minus 25 sort of area. And I'm going to actually add some color black into the backs, black, so it's going to be um, about plus 10. Because this is a 48 megapixel file this time and not a 12 megapixel file, I think we can get away with reducing the texture right down to around 30. So just really soften that image up without losing too much data because of the amount of data available in that file. I'm going to add some clarity back into this image only a little bit we don't want to go too crazy with that i'm going to dim the vibrancy down a bit and maybe minus 10 and then add a little bit of saturation and you can see that already we have sort of counteracted a lot of the nasty characteristics of the iphone camera and we are adding a lot of nicer characteristics back in we're going to do the same thing down here we're going to decrease the sharpening and i'm going to decrease it right to about five here. Again, because if we zoom right in, you can see that the before and after with that sharpening is actually massive. So if I, if I increase that to 50 there, you can see just how much softening that's actually doing. And in my opinion, that looks significantly better and is actually a characteristic of a much more expensive camera. You actually want more softness than you want from sharpness. And as I've spoken about time and time again, it's artificial sharpening that camera manufacturers or smartphone camera manufacturers are adding to kind of counteract some of the uh, other characteristics of their cameras. But in my opinion, it's actually nicer to soften them up. I'm going to add a profile correction as well there. And then I'm gonna, just going to go up to the top, just our final correction and I'm going to add some exposure back in and you can see that that now if we hit the before and after that is a pretty substantial difference and in my opinion a much much more attractive edit. Let's talk briefly about the lenses available on your iPhone. So most iPhone models now have an ultra wide and then a standard main camera. And then the pro models like this one here has a telephoto as well. So it's got a 0.5X, a 1X and a 3X mode. The highest quality lens on your camera is going to be that 1X, particularly on the iPhone 14 Pro line because that main camera is that gorgeous 48 megapixel shooter. It is an absolute weapon of a lens. It is fantastic and it is significantly better than the performance out of the ultra wide and the telephoto. Those lenses are good. They're not insignificant and they are certainly worth shooting with. But again, coming back to that point, if you are trying to get the best photo from your iPhone camera, give yourself the best chance. You want to make sure that switch is on in the camera settings to turn on full 48 megapixel mode, even though the files are absolutely enormous. They contain significantly more data for editing that shot. It is the best lens we've ever had on an iPhone. That 48 megapixel lens on the iPhone 14 Pro is the closest thing to a professional camera setup we've ever seen on the iPhone. Don't get me wrong, it isn't going to replace any professional camera gear, but at the same time it is more than enough if you were to leave your bigger camera at home. For me for instance, I shoot a ton purely using the iPhone and it has meant that I have significantly less requirement for kind of carrying around my little Fuji X100T that I previously made a video on. Another fantastic option and it's something you don't need to shoot in RAW for, uh, but it's to shoot in black and white. So if you shoot raw, you do have more control to be able to create better black and white photos, but you can also edit standard JPEGs to achieve this black and white look. But in my opinion, this is the easiest way to actually make your camera
camera on the iPhone look like a more professional setup. You lose a lot of measurement in a black and white photo. So you'll see a black and white photo online. It might have been shot with an iPhone. You won't be able to tell nearly as easily as you would be able to with a standard color shot. If you haven't ever shot photos or edited photos with a black and white look, I would thoroughly recommend it. It definitely brings a more kind of vintage vibe to shooting on your iPhone. And like I said, it can really elevate the kind of level or perceived level of your photographs. Finally, I do want to talk on portrait mode because portrait mode is very, very popular. Tons of people shoot with it. I personally don't use portrait mode a whole bunch myself. What I actually tend to do is I use that main uh, 1X camera mode. And because of the increased sensor size in the iPhone 14 Pro, you can actually achieve a decent amount of depth of field through your images if you are shooting a subject that is relatively close to you. So you're not gonna achieve much depth of field if you are shooting a subject that's farther away. So a portrait taken from two meters away, it's just not gonna be the right look. You may be born to shoot portrait mode in that instance because it's basically the only way you're gonna get any separation on a phone between your subject and the background. But for any items, maybe you're holding something in the frame, uh, shooting with that 1X is fantastic and it does really allow you to get a really nice shallow depth of field effect with the optical camera performance of the iPhone 14. Portrait mode can be great. You can't edit raw photos in portrait mode. I would say just use it sparingly. Don't shoot with it all the time. Again, I come back to that mantra that if you are trying to produce the best photo you possibly can by shooting on your iPhone, I would say portrait mode is not gonna do it for you. As promised, if you've made it to this point in the video, you can go to this link available in the description. Uh, it's kind of hidden at the bottom of the description if you are interested in downloading the preset. This is a standard correction for Adobe Lightroom, um, but it will definitely bring your iPhone raw shots up from kind of a slightly more medium level to a slightly more professional level. There's a few softness and sharpness enhancements that hopefully will take your photos to a level above.